Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you a numerical, another numerical example involving eigenfunctions. And in this particular case, we're going to have elements or probability amplitudes that are complex numbers. So here's where we actually come to show that when it comes to probabilities, when we extract the probability from the eigenfunction, we get a real number. And that is essentially what we would measure. Uh, physically from the system okay so first thing I want to do is I want to say that these two eigenfunctions have the same basis vector so for generality I'm just gonna call that basis alpha n so basically this is alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 similarly alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 they have the same basis so that means that we can perform operations with them so the first thing we want to do is we want to normalize the two of them. Okay, so we're going to normalize these two eigenfunctions. And then after that, we're going to find, so normalize. And then we're going to find the inner product of phi with respect to psi and see what we get from that. Okay, so the first part is normalizing. So let's take this one. We know that to normalize that we need we require that the inner part of the eigenfunction with itself is equal to 1. So this must be equal to 1. So we're going to check if that's true. We have this. Now we know for the inner product because this is an orthonormal basis, it's just going to be the sum of the complex conjugate of each element times the element itself. So we're going to have here, the first element is going to be minus 3i conjugate times minus 3i plus 2 plus i conjugate times 2 plus i plus 4 conjugate, which is just 4 times 4. So now we're going to have, this is going to be 3i times minus 3i so we're gonna have minus 9i squared this is going to be 2 minus i so the operation that is going to result from this is going to be 4 we have 2 minus i here so that's going to be minus i times i so that's minus i squared and here we have 16 So we know i squared is just minus 1, so this is going to be 9. And then this right here is going to be, well, we're going to have 4. This is going to be plus 1, and this is going to be 16. <laughs> and all of this is going to add up to what? Well, it's going to add up to 30, right? So what we're going to do now is, well, this is clearly not equal to 1, so we need to normalize this. So how do we normalize it? We find a normalization constant that is defined as 1 over the square root of the inner product. So in this case, we're going to have 1 over square root of 30. So that's the quick way to do this. So all we need to do now is to normalize the eigenfunction psi is multiply everything by 1 over square root of 30. So we're going to have the elements here, minus 3i, 2 plus i, and 4. So that's essentially it. And now the next thing is we're going to do the same for phi. So we're going to normalize it. We're going to find the inner product and make sure that it is equal to 1. So what did we have for phi? Well, for phi we had 2. So here's 2 complex conjugate times 2, so that's just 4. Here we have minus i complex conjugate times minus i. And finally we have 2 minus 3i complex conjugate times 2 minus 3i. So we're going to have 4. So complex conjugate of this i, so this is going to be minus i squared. Here we're going to have plus 4, and here we're going to have min plus 3 times minus 3. That's going to be minus 9i squared. So this is going to be 4 plus 1 
plus 4 and here we're going to have plus 9 again so this is going to be equal to 18 clearly not equal to 1 so we're going to proceed to normalize this so we're going to find another normalization constant I'm going to call this one with respect to phi so this is just going to be the square root of the inner product of phi with itself and this is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 18 so now the normalized eigenfunction is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of phi like that so this is just the, the original eigenfunction okay so we have now normalized both of them so that's good and that means that we can actually perform some operations now we can extract probabilities so just as an example let's say we wanted to find the probability that psi is going to be in some state let's say alpha 1 okay so what do we mean by that well we're gonna take the first element so this is going to correspond to the eigenstate alpha 1 and we're gonna say well this is going to be minus 3i over square root 30 complex conjugate times minus 3i over square root 30 and that is going to be equal to well this is going to be positive now and we're gonna have i times minus i so that's minus i squared which is plus 1 and we're gonna have 3 over square root 30 squared and this is going to give us 9 over 30 which can be simplified to 3 over 10 so we have a probability of 3 over 10 of having this eigenfunction in this state alpha 1 and we can do the same for the other two states alpha 2 and alpha 3 and then if we add the probabilities together we should always get 1 because we normalized that eigenfunction so that's the general idea and the reason we normalize is because we want probabilities to add up to 1 okay second part of the problem was finding the inner product of those two eigenfunctions so we're gonna go back here we're going to go back here and we're gonna do just that so we're going to have inner product of phi with respect to psi so remember we're going to take the complex conjugate of the elements of phi and then multiply it by this so first line is going to be 2 complex conjugate of 2 is just 2 and here we're going to have minus 3i and now we're going to have plus second element complex conjugate would be plus i times 2 plus i and the last term would be 2 plus 3i which is the complex conjugate is 2 minus 3i times 4 so we're going to expand this out this is going to be minus 6i plus 2i plus i squared which is minus 1 here we have plus 8 plus 12i so this is going to be minus 4i plus 12i that's 8i and here we're ha gonna have 7 so we can write this as 7 plus 8i and you will notice and, and I'm not including the normalized version here I just want to show you something so because we know that the normalization we just extract it's the same constant so we just extract the constant out of this operation we square it so in the end if we wanted to write the normalized version of this we would have 1 over 30 times 7 plus 8i so this would be the normalized version of that now you'll notice well this is not equal to a real number so what does that tell us about this system well it tells us that the eigen functions uh, these eigenfunctions are not orthonormal they're not orthonormal because we don't actually get 
a real number here. If they were orthonormal, because they're two distinct eigenfunctions, we should get zero. But that is not the case. We get a non-zero number here. So that means that these two functions are not orthonormal to each other. That's essentially what it is. Okay, so hopefully this has given you a little bit of a clearer idea of what this whole what this whole business with eigenfunctions and eigenstates and inner products and normalization is all about. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can extend this same kind of concept to continuous wave functions. And that's where things are going to get really interesting.